Hey y'all, Tom here, and thanks for dropping by my little shack in the corner, right back over there, for a ham shack chat. This time we're going to be talking about the new contest that the American Radio Relay League has just announced. The objective of the ARRL International Digital Contest is for amateurs around the world to contact as many other amateurs in as many four-digit maidenhead grid squares as possible using non-ridy digital modes. Now before we get into the contest, please take a moment to like <laughs> please like me this video by popping that thumbs up icon. If you stick around until the end of the video, I'll be giving you three tips for operating this contest. This contest will happen on the first full weekend of June, beginning at 1800 Zulu time on Saturday and going until midnight UTC on Sunday. This makes it a 30 hour long contest. Uh, you can operate on the HF bands plus six meters. So 1.8, 3.5, 7, 14, 21, 28, and the 50 megahertz bands. Now, according to the rules, you can operate using any digital mode except RIDI, uh, a mode that supports the contest exchange, uh, which we will review in a bit. However, it is apparent from the rest of the rules that the primary modes are FT8 and FT4. As a side note, uh, RIDI uh, will now be the sole mode for the ARRL RIDI Roundup. Uh, the RIDI Roundup uh, for a few years also included FT8 and FT4. Those are, those are now no longer part of that uh, contest. Uh, the ARRL contest branch has recommended these frequencies right here and uh, for you to use those during the contest and I will add them to the video description so you can come back and reference them. Uh, now if you don't know how to add them to your WSJTX pull down list, uh, please take a look at this video. Uh, now I do, it is, it's a different contest but I talk about how to add frequencies, how to get into the contest mode, and also how to set up your uh, log prior to the contest so you don't lose anything of import. Now, I'm hoping that before the contest date, the good folks in Princeton add this contest to the list. But if they haven't, you can use the WW Digi contest uh, though you will have to do some modifications on the Cabrillo file header accordingly. Uh, don't worry about scoring as the contest robot will adjust your score appropriately. Operating categories are pretty simple. There's single operator low power, 100 watts out, and uh, QRP, 5 watts out. Uh, the multi-operator uh, station, it, it's only multi-operator single transmitter. So no multi-multis. Uh, and that is also low or QRP power. There are no high power categories. The multi-operator station can operate the entire 30 hours. The single operator stations are limited to operating uh, 24 hours. And if you're going to be a single operator, Go take a look at the rules for the special rules about taking breaks. They're pretty stringent and uh, they will enter into your strategic uh, plans for how to operate the contest. Uh, everybody's allowed to use spotting assistance. Within these categories, there are also three overlays that can be claimed. The first is the all enclosed antenna overlay where all of your antennas must be inside your building, such as a dipole strung in your attic or a loop antenna uh, in, in your spare room. Uh, the next is the limited time overlay where you have uh, an eight hour maximum operating time. The third is a combination of the two and it's called the combined all enclosed antenna and limited time overlay. 
Now this was specifically meant for people who usually are ignored uh, in the contest community. Uh, those operators who just really don't have the wherewithal, you know, they have HOA restrictions, or even if they live in an apartment, uh, this is their chance to actually get out and make a few contacts and be competitive because you compete against other people. So if you are doing a, the limited time, your score is only going to be up against other operators operating limited time. Go read the rules and uh, figure out the specifics of, of what you want. All stations may contact any other station regardless of operating category, power, or overlay status once per band. The exchange is your four-digit Maidenhead grid square locator for both stations. For example, mine is EM89. You'll receive one point for each two-way contact and a bonus point for each 500 kilometers or 311-ish miles of distance between the centers of the four-digit grid squares of the two stations. And that's rounded up to the next highest value. This roundup means that you'll receive at least two points for every contact outside your own grid square. Not too shabby. Uh, your logs are due within seven days of the completion of the contest. So that would be no later than midnight on the Sunday following the contest. I recommend that you don't drag your feet submitting the logs. Now, your logs have to be submitted in the Cabrillo file format and uploaded at the contest log submission page. Uh, there is, of course, a link down in the video description. Now, just a little warning and advice. You may get some errors as you submit your log. I, I can tell you, every time I submit a log, I'll say 75% of the time, uh, I get it kicked back once or twice for errors. Don't worry about it. Just correct the errors and resubmit until you get a notification that it has been accepted. It will be very specific what the error is. It'll tell you line such and such, or you know, you uh, this call sign here, not a valid call sign. Maybe you worked W M zero. O, W mu, okay, but instead of putting the zero in there, you put an O. You didn't catch it. However, the contest robot knows the difference between a zero and an O. It will say, "Hey, go back there, figure out what you meant, correct it, or do what you have." I got. I promised you a few operating tips. So, the first tip is to download the rules and take the time to read them. What I've presented here isn't everything in the rules, uh, just the most important parts. A link to the rules is down in the description. Next, if you can, use the overlay categories. And whether you can or not, uh, figure out what your best operating frequency is or what frequencies you can operate on and plan your operations for when you know the bands that you are capable of will be active. A, a lot of people, I don't know why, you know, they'll get on at midnight and wonder why 10 meters isn't working. Or they'll get on in the middle of the day and wonder why they can't get on uh, 80 meters or 40 meters isn't as good as it was. There won't be any big guns out there. And you'll only be competing against others in your operating category. Uh, so finally, make sure your system is set up for the contest at least a couple of days before. I usually set mine up the weekend before and check it out somewhere in the middle of the week. Uh, there's nothing more frustrating than turning on your rig, hearing people working, and not being able to make a contact because you forgot a setting. Uh, don't ask me how I know. Don't ask me how I know that. <laughs> Please take a moment to give me a like. <laughs> Share. Sharing is fun. This video with your friends. Leave a comment. Questions. Comments. Below.
whether you have a question or you want to correct something I've said, that's what the comments are for. Finally, please consider subscribing. I subscribe to Teen Beat. 73 until the next Hey Y'all. Uh, always at your service. I'm Tom, ND3N, and I am out.